Hello and welcome to episode 9 of my tips, tricks, and techniques for the leather workshop. Um, I'm going to try to do a bunch of them in a small amount of time for you. Um, my name is George. Welcome to the channel and uh, let's get into it. Thank you. This tip uh, stems from a remark that I had uh, several days ago on my latest belt making video on um, how to draw an English point if you don't have a punch or you don't want to invest any money other than making a belt for yourself at the moment. So one of the easiest ways to do it is take a piece of cardstock, fold it directly in half for a one and a half inch belt width. Obviously we'll split that and that's three quarters of an inch. Once you have that line drawn adjacent to the fold line, then you can take anything that you want. The lid of a peanut butter jar, a protractor, or um, you know, anything that you have that's round, place it on the edge of the line so that you have a nice transition between the edge and your pen, and then draw it up like that. And then it's nothing more than cutting this out. And now you have a nice English point for your belting. All right, that's kind of an old one. It's been around for a little while. Um, another way that you can take it is you can take, um, this one is a three and a half inch round uh, protractor type of a device. You can get these at uh, Hobby Lobby. Anyway, square off your belt ends. And then all you do to get that English point is in each corner, give yourself enough room for your pen line on each side. Draw that, then come over to the other side, like that. And then this is your English point, and it's that simple. And if you want a, uh, a little narrower or a little more pointy, then just use a larger protractor, that's it. So it's that simple, so you don't have to invest in any tools. Um, but obviously the end punch or a strap end punch like this or an acrylic template for the various um, belt widths is a lot easier. If you're only going to make one belt, you don't have to invest in these. All right, that's the first tip. Oh, almost forgot. When I first started uh, doing belts, I didn't have any way of making a nice English point. So I went into the kitchen. This isn't the same one. This is for a demo, but I would use this uh, little spatula that uh, I had, and I would just mark my ends and cut them out. And, and once you cut them out, you can take a fingernail file and then just sort it round the corners a little bit to give it a nice little appearance. That's it for belt tips without spending much money. Here's a uh, follow-up tip to that last clip, and uh, it's nothing more than if you cut and if you punch and cut your holes for a belt slot, if you have a thick tongue buckle, um, the best way to do it, so instead of just punching two holes and then connecting a straight line, punch a larger hole in the center, connect the edges of the holes, and then you have a nice tapered hole that will um, make uh, this thick tongue buckle easier um, in your fold back. All right. So while you're at it, just take, um, take your paper pattern that you made your English point from, add a couple of holes in the appropriate measurements and uh, your belt slot, and then you have a pattern for that as well. That's it, I'm done with belts. Here's a, a very quick tip. So at um, some of the big uh, stores like Walmart, they have these in their craft section, these cutting mats that are relatively inexpensive more so than any place else I've been able to find them. So I wanted a good platform underneath. So what I do is this um, cutting board here, this poly uh, board is one inch thick by the same measurements as that mat 18 by 24. This you can get at restaurant supply places. Uh, they literally come in any size 
that you can afford. So one inch thick, large area, a great board, restaurant supply houses. One of the little known best waxes for doing your knife sheaths and holsters is uh, called Brilliant Wax Yankee Polish. This is used in the shoe repair, shoemaking industry, and uh, usually requires some type of a line finisher. You can't just rub this stuff on your edge like you can beeswax and paraffin, but you do get a really nice hard edged wax um, effect on your edges and let me show you how you can do this on your own small machine. If you want to use uh, some of this uh, brilliant wax um, on your knife sheaths or holsters, you'll need a power um, burnishing wheel. You can either go to ProEdge uh, Burnishing Wheels Dot com or you can have a woodworker make one for you. Don't let the rats chew up your, your coca bola wood. But anyway, you do need some kind of power um, to generate a little bit of heat to melt this hard wax. So I just load up my wooden burnisher like this. And then once you get that loaded on there, then you can just use it for your edge and then just run it over to where you have fresh wax and you get a hard edge. Once that's dry, it'll be there forever. All right, so it's simple as that. And um, when you're all done with this, when you're all done with this, you can just take a rag, once it's dry, you can polish that. And then if you want to do another color, uh, be very careful doing this, but all you have to do is take a rag of some sort and clean it off. Don't let that rag get caught in that motor and spin out of your hands. Um, but it, anyway, that'll come off and then you can use a brown or you can use a neutral. That's, that's it. If you are a holster maker, you know that there's going to come a time where you're going to have to slightly stretch out the holster for that perfect fit. And uh, most uh, people will just use a box of cling-free saran wrap. It's never been cling-free for me. I go to the hardware store and I pick up these um, uh, wrappers. They're um, a saran wrap type material and uh, they are to wrap up boxes. But they work great for... Um, your holsters. Basically, I start it just like this and then wrap it around like this. You know, to whatever thickness that you need to wrap, you don't have to worry about it clinging on itself. It makes a nice tight fit and uh, I use it all the time. Try it yourself. So if you're a knife maker, leather worker, and you get black iron oxide on your beautiful project, you have two choices. Dye it black or get you some oxalic acid. This I got back in the leather factory days. Um, it's more than I'll ever need in my lifetime. If you can't find any of that, um, just get you some wood bleach at the hardware store. And um, so you wanna get rid of that. I'm making a joke with this safety equipment here, but you definitely want ventilation, some type of a face mask, and, uh, and gloves. So, my safety tip is out of the way. Take your beautifully made project that has iron oxide on it, get you a sponge with that mixture. Um, it's best to mix it with warm water, let those crystals dissolve a little bit, and then just paint it onto your leather. Um, those metal oxides will dissolve. Um, let that dry and then um, do another coat with clear water. Um, again, be very careful with this because it is an acid. So anyway, that will get rid of your iron oxides and you don't have to dye it black now. Just be careful with it. Episode nine is complete and uh, I hope you gained something from this uh, this. Uh, video. So remember, continue to subscribe, share, like, 
leave a comment, positive or negative. It doesn't matter to me. I appreciate them all. So we'll see you on volume 10 down the road. Thank you.